said four million small businesses recently received a postcard in their mailbox telling them that they are eligible for a health care tax cut this year he went on to say it's worth perhaps tens of thousands of dollars to each of these companies well on face value that sounds pretty good mr president small business owners all across the country would welcome that sort of help but yet I'd like to bring to the floor today uh, an, uh, a, an article written by one small business owner, Charles Arp. And uh, it's the title of his, of his, of his uh, column is Obamacare's Broken Promise, One Company's Experience. And I talked with Mr. Arp uh, yesterday by phone. He's in, in, in Illinois. Uh, and he said this is absolutely what's happened to his business. And he knows I'm going to be sharing it on the floor of the Senate today because he has concerns. And he got that postcard. And he was at first encouraged by the president's words, the president's promise. But again, it's another broken promise to the American people. So this, and this is a letter dated June 18th of this year. He says, a few months after the passage of President Obama's health care overhaul, a postcard arrived which, which led me to believe there may be a benefit coming to my small firm. He said the mailing from the Treasury Department touted a generous 35 percent tax credit to firms with less than 25 full-time employees, averaging less than $50,000 per year in wages, a category, he says, which includes my company. He said, in fact, I thought we were right in the sweet spot, with 17 full-time employees averaging slightly more than $42,000 per year. Well, small business needs relief. He goes on to explain about his company. He said, I manage Penny Printing Company in Sterling, Illinois. He said, I'm the president of the firm which our family has owned for 100 years. He says, health care expenses are a major obstacle to Penny's long-term prosperity. Each year in May, our policy renews, and we are faced with double-digit premium increases, 20 to 40 percent in recent years. He said, some of the increases absorbed by the company some gets passed on to the employees through higher premiums, through deductibles, and co-pays. He said, we've experimented with self-funding and high deductible health plans. He said, last year, we were forced to downgrade to an HMO plan. He says, we are nearing the end of our rope. So I was hopeful to learn, he said, that there could be some benefit for us in the new law. I and mean, what small business owner wouldn't? Well, he goes on to say, postcard in hand, I did a quick calculation, and figured our tax credit should be about $28,000. Well, this is 35% of the $80,000 we expect to spend this year on employee health care premiums. He said, I phoned our health, care, our health insurance broker and inquired whether anything special had to be done, not wanting to be excluded by some technicality. He reported that there was no special requirement, so more good news. Aha, the next section, barrier to tax credit. He said there was a problem. A few weeks later, I received an email with a link to the National Federation of Independent Businesses online calculator. And this is a calculator designed, he said, to help firms determine their qualifications for the tax credit. I plugged in our numbers and pressed update to yield a calculation, he says, of zero zip nada. Double checking, I tried again and again, finally concluding the 35 percent tax credit will be available only to firms with 10 or fewer employees averaging $25,000 or less per year. He says increasing either factor, either the number of employees or the average salary, greatly diminishes the magnitude of the tax credit. Increasing both factors yields a parabolic reduction in the result. He said being in the graphic arts industry, he decided to create a chart diagramming the limits of this generous, quote, generous tax break. And I, and I have a chart here, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. Well, he goes, Mr. Arp goes on to say, not one to give up easily, I continued my pursuit, because he had the postcard, of course. Well, he said, surely there had to be some benefit in this for me after years and years of paying the toll for big government programs and receiving nothing. The vague language on the postcard instructed readers to, to learn more at www.irs.gov. He said, there it said to exclude owners. 
those having a stake of 5% or more uh, from all the input values. He said, well, I eagerly entered the new numbers, subtracting myself, my annual premium, he said, and my salary. Well, this brought our hard count down to 16 employees, dropped the average salary to 40,000. He said, I entered the, the numbers, and the calculator displayed the same result, another big goose egg. He goes on. He said, talk about unintended consequences. He said, my firm would have to reduce its workforce and cut employees' wages to benefit from this newly enacted Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Is this what the objective should be? I would never consider taking such an action. Most of the employees have worked at uh, Penny for 20 years or more. He said, it got me to thinking, though, Maybe we could divide Penny Printing Company into two smaller firms. He said, well, I'm no expert at gaming the government like some people. It certainly is a possibility many will consider. He said, I feel foolish now after getting my hopes up for a government solution to our problem. He said, our firm is running out of affordable options. He said, it is my belief that health insurance should be decoupled from employment and bought by individuals and families in the same way automobile insurance is, public, is, is purchased. It is my fear that Obamacare is a step, he says, in the wrong direction, and matters will get worse, not better, for Penny Printing Company and others like us. So th there you have it, Mr. President. It's